Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I created a picture of a beef burger uh, using uh, pastel and ink. A lot of people have asked me how I do this uh, and so I'm going to show you in this video how to create something a little bit like this. Uh, there's some ink work there and then pastel over the top. Pastel works really well with ink as it kind of covers up uh, some of your mistakes if you make them um, using an ink uh, stick without drawing. Uh, but also it, it kind of really helps, I think, work with the ink um, and create a nice image. So join me for the next 15 to 20 minutes as we work through this image and I'll show you how I built it up. So here's my blank sheet of paper. This is normal cartridge paper, excuse me. And you can see the reference image in the top left hand side of the, the picture. Now I'm using my uh, piece of uh, branch that uh, and some ink and as you can see I'm just putting in straight lines at the moment trying to get that burger bun um, into the image. Uh, there's a stray chip uh, coming into the image so I'm just putting that 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 in there as a mark. Um, I'm going to start putting the chips in now um, trying to follow where they are but uh, yeah, they're, they're quite random, so uh, we'll we see how we go with that, just putting in sort of marks, really. Um, and, and some of the pastel work I do will, will go over the top of this and uh, hopefully make it make a bit more sense. Uh, this is the serviette that sort of sits in the, the silver uh, chip presentation um, vessel, I'm going to call it. It's, <laughs> it's a very posh way of describing... Um, something or nothing really. Again, lots of random chip shapes going in, maybe following what is, is on the image in front of me, but just basically some random sort of chip shapes. You'll notice I've put some uh, tissue paper down to stop the ink splashing. I tend to splash a lot of ink and make quite a bit of a mess, so I, I do tend to put a bit of tissue paper down just to catch any odd drips of ink as, as, as I'm drawing this. Um, by holding the pen at this quite steep angle, I'm able to control the way the ink leaves the stick. So there's not too much uh, running off uh, the stick at the moment. Um, I'm going to put in that little pot of, um, uh, I think it was uh, mustard. Uh, so I'm just going to put that in. Again, straight lines to describe the top, not, not trying to create the circle that's actually there, um, but some nice straight lines and I'll correct some of this work when I put the the pastel on in a minute and they're just putting that uh, that mustard shape in. Uh, going back into the burger now correcting the line of the burger. Um, again something we can do with the pastel is, is to uh, make that make a little bit more sense. Um, so we, we will uh, we're, we're sort of correct the things that are not quite working with the ink work and that's what I like working with um, gouache, gouache and pastel really is that level of control that you get over the top of the ink um, so yeah I, I do like I do like working with these things a um, bit of uh, greenery gone in there and now the, the, the kind of the bottom part of the bun is going in um, I will draw the knife and the plate as well as, uh, as I work my way around the image. Not really taken much time to, to look at shadows at the moment, just putting in uh, the sort of the main marks and again now I'm starting to put in some of those shadows using the side of the stick um, to make some really gorgeous marks. I love it when they, those marks happen like that, they're just, oh, they're just wonderful. Um, just working the, the ink into the page. It, it's, it's such a, a joyful process, really, um, adding the shadows in. And if I go too mad with these shadows, I'm not too worried because I can put the pastel over the top of the ink and bring some of that work back. So it, it is, it is, a, it is a, it's a nice process. It really is. If you can try it, I would really advise doing it. Obviously, it's uh, something you need to perhaps do in the studio to start off with. Um, but I do do this, um, if I go out drawing as well, I will take some ink and a stick and uh, and, and work in the same way. Um, again, talking about the, the, the position of the stick, I'm, I'm holding the stick at the very end of the stick. I'm not up by the point. And this allows me to have um, 
some quite um, quite quite random marks really. They're not really accurate marks. They're they're, they're interesting marks. I always think because they they're describing something that's round with with straight lines. And uh, I do think this really is a, is a wonderful technique if if you if you do get the chance to try it. Try try drawing straight lines instead of putting the curves in straight away. You'll find that your work is. It's so much more interesting um, with, with those those marks. Again, now looking at some of the shadows in this image, um, I used the nice big mark and, and full ink on the side, but I waited for the pen to dry out a bit before scratching in some of the the shadow on the um, the pot of of mustard. Adding a shadow under the knife now again using the same technique, just gently holding the pen, um, not trying to make big ink marks um, when they do happen they can be unexpected but like I say with a pastel you can go over this and, and correct some of this work which is is, is the, the nice bit of this technique um, now I've got my drawing in I am really just going around um, titivating really and putting in marks where I think it will help the image so that that dark mark is there in in the uh, in the photograph, but I'm just sort of adding it um, in a way that's not a full black ink mark, but making it more interesting. Um, as you see, just scratching out that that dark shape, and you can see that my my image is really matching up to the photo now. Um, all the all the bright areas are white, all the darker areas are dark. The shadow is really coming in now. Um, being careful to go up to edges and and make things look. Um, painting negatively, I guess, is, is what most people would say to those edges to, to give me um, what I need. And there was that, I love, <laughs> I love it when you get a beef burger with a stick in the middle, uh, just holding the things together. So I just put that in. Again, it goes over some of the lines that I've already drawn, but not too worried about that because the whole image is really working as, as one. And there's my first bendy line that I've put in. The first line that's actually not straight um, went in around the edge of the plate. Uh, I, I am just I'm fiddling at this point. I don't really need to do too much more to this, but I do have a tendency to fiddle, and that is exactly what I'm doing now. Um, it's something when I watch these videos back, I think I wish you wouldn't fiddle. Um, I'm adding some sort of pattern to these silver uh, containers, um, and also some of the pattern that's on the knife. Um, I've waited till the end. I know a lot of people when you draw. Um, you kind of get involved in the detail and will start to put those things in. I, I know I used to be guilty of that. Um, what I tend to do now is try and wait for the end of the, the image to, to put things in like that. Oh, a nice dark mark underneath the, uh, the container of the chips there just to hold it onto the plate. Suddenly it looks like it, it's stuck to the plate, whereas before it was, it was quite a weedy line. And putting some shadow in underneath the plate, again with a, the ink sticks, not quite got as much ink on it, um, and it's working really well to, to to get that scratching in again over some of the other darker bits of the burger bun. And uh, we will work over this with pastel in a minute and you'll see how um, it brings the image uh, to life. So we've got our pastels now, so a variety of, of shades of colour there. Uh, and I'm going to start off with my lighter shade, which is really in the chips. And I'm not I'm not colouring in single chips here, I'm kind of making a, an overall gestural mark. Again, not worrying about the detail, but looking at where the, the, the brighter areas of the image are and using the yellow in that area. So I've got a nice bit on the bun, um, over the chips, and in the dip. Um, and it sort of starts to hold the image together when you do this, um, putting these colours on first of all. It's, it's kind of to get an impression rather than to to make the finished image. Um, I'm using the the sort of uh, orange colour to do the bun, um, the darker sides. Again, you can see I've used flat square marks. And this is what I was talking about. I'm um, going over some of those black marks to highlight them and get rid of them. I'm using the grey coloured uh, pastel now to go over some of these really dark areas where I want to just brighten them up a little bit, but still that black ink shows through and, and makes the, the image seem more, more solid in a way, um, I guess, is, is the reason why I do it. 
Um, I'm, I'm very lightly as well applying the pastel. I'm not putting it on heavy. Um, I'm just putting a very light layer on there and using the colour in more than one place on the image to give some consistency uh, to the viewer and to help hold the, the image together in a way. <clears throat> Randomly putting in some chips now. The first time we've actually put in chips and these are just lines of colour. I'm not actually going this is a chip. It's just little bits of, uh, of, of flat colour. And it's almost instinctual the way I pick up the um, the, the pastels. Um, I'm not looking for exact colour matches. In fact, the, the burger itself was done with a, a dark black pastel and some brown. Again, here I, I'm going over some of those darker marks with the blue pastel just to um, bring out some of the detail now. And, and to get rid of some of those dark marks um, and make make the image come alive and sing a bit. So I'm doing some negative painting now into the shadow area of the uh, of the image. A lot of this is um, is just a gestural mark. Uh, the the colour blue isn't even in um, my reference photo. It's, it's just a, a, a way to indicate that that silver tankard and make the thing fit together well. Um, you can see now, you can start to see what I'm trying to do. The areas of the picture, there are some white areas still left where the bright areas are in the photo, but I'm, I'm kind of making marks now to separate tonal areas so light against dark dark against light is what i'm looking for here i'm a watercolorist by heart so i tend to use pastels in the same way as i use watercolor so i'm now starting to separate the the areas of tone um, and you can see on the side of the plate there and underneath the knife i'm separating out the lights from the dark the light of the knife against the dark of the, ref the reflection and the, the the reflection of the plate away from the plate and this is this is what brings my work alive. I think it, it's having that ability to see um, the difference in tone and to make it work on an image. I don't smudge um, pastel when I use it, but I do use lighter colours over darker colours, and I make those colours merge a bit more. So in a, in effect, I'm, I'm I guess I'm, I'm blending together, but I'm I'm using the pastel to do it rather than smudging it with my finger. And I think this gives you a more vibrant image, if I'm honest, if, if you can work in this way. Um, it does seem to, to work. Again, looking at that light against dark, I take, took the white away in the container with the, um, the dip, but it's, it's actually made it work better against the burger. It's given a nice light against dark, dark against light line. I'm still working with, with flat lines and square lines as well. I'm not doing any sort of... Um, circular motions they're, they're all very straight lines that are then helping to bring the image together and making you believe that there are a kind of circles in this image um, whereas if you watch you'll see that I'm actually just making straight lines really no, no real effort to to make corners or curves um, in my in my painting method the colors that I'm using in this image are, are variations on each other so a light blue a dark blue a yellow a light yellow um, there's a gray and a black um, and there's some various reds and oranges that i've used on the burger bun and the burger itself um, i'm going over the ink as well so there's not much of the ink work left now although it has helped to create the image in the first place um, the burger bun itself was really quite dark and I'm trying to get that to be the main focus of the the image and I think it's starting to work I think you're starting to see uh, the the burger on the plate now keep um, adjusting the tone on the piece of paper that's holding the chips together and, and random straight line marks just to help the eye uh, there's far too much white on the page so I'm just it, it, it's, it's again an instinctual thing just to kind of put a line out from somewhere to to help with the, um, the idea of tone in the picture. Um, 
it's not something that's easy to explain. It's just something I seem to know when and, and how to do. Um, and, and you can learn this by, by looking at your work and, and sort of seeing areas where you think, if I just add that colour there, it helps hold the whole picture together because it's reflecting another colour exactly the same on the other side of the paper. Um, it's kind of, again, it's a watercolour technique where you use the, the, the colours all around the image to, to bring it out. And I'm starting to make things feel a lot more solid now, a lot more opaque in the way I'm applying the pastel. It's a lot darker on the paper. Um, again, I'm, I'm kind of getting to the end of this image, I feel. Um, there's not much left to do. Maybe some sort of brighter marks here and there just to spotlight things. But I think that's it. That's my image of a burger in a bun. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. hope you got something from it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. That's my final image. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like. If you're feeling a little bit daring, uh, why not subscribe to the channel and you will get to see all these images as we create them. But that for now is all. Thank you and I'll see you next time.